So, who are the Vancouver Titans? Hey guys, how's it going? It's Ben Cunningham. Welcome back to the Overwatch League. We have had the new Vancouver Titans roster announced. Obviously, if you haven't been keeping up with it, where have you been? Uh, but the runaway, the old runaway roster has been released from Vancouver Titans. There were some issues that has been covered in another video. And basically, Vancouver for this week have had no, basically no roster until now when they, well, a couple of days ago when they announced their new roster to play for this weekend's fixtures in the Overwatch League. And obviously it looks very, 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 very different to what we used to for the Vancouver Titans. And I think it will be worth taking a look at them and going through them because there's a lot of names that have been around the tier two scene for quite a while. So it was wi widely rumored that uh, it would be second wins, entire the entire team that was picked up. And it wasn't in the end, although it, although it was the majority of second wind. So Let's go through the team here then. Let's take a look at the supports to start off with, as we very often do. And the first support is Rulf. So Rulf is Canadian. He's 25 years old. And he's actually been around the Overwatch scene since uh, mid-2016. He's been at quite a few teams. He's also featured for the Canadian World Cup squad in 2016 and 2017. At 25, he is at the, what people will probably call the latter stages of his esports career. But again, there's no real statutory number for that his signature heroes are a zen and a nana so he's that side that side of the support line and his history actually has it's a pretty rich history from tier 2 of overwatch show back before the overwatch league he was with cloud 9 uh obviously that's the na brand of cloud cloud 9 because there was a few cloud 9 teams around including cloud uh cloud 9 Condu panthera i think it was uh c9 Condu panthera uh but this was cloud 9 in na which were a decent team you know Gladiators Legion, uh, you know, during the more recent times. Now, I'm sure we all know Gladiators Legion. They were the academy team of the Los Angeles Gladiators. They did fairly decently in Contenders, although they didn't ever actually win anything in Contenders, I don't believe. But they did come darn close. So, during 2019, in both seasons, they came second to the Philadelphia, to the Fusion University. Well, well that you can tell that was a little while ago, because Fusion University doesn't exist anymore, but... During the early 2019, they lost to Fusion University in the final, coming second, and they lost to Atlanta Academy in the final in the second half of 2019, coming second. So, it's not bad. It's not a bad history, but again, it's not massive. It's not massive. So, it's kind of interesting. Then he moved on to second wind, and yes, they did get a win in Season 1, Week 1 of Contenders this year, but... That's pretty much about it. Second Wind haven't done too much since with getting a uh, not getting knocked out in the quarterfinals of the second week, which meant they had to be bumped down to trials. So, yeah, it's it's not a massive, massive signing. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna beat around the bush and say, hey, this guy's got enormous potential, fantastic signing. It's not gonna be the Vancouver that we're all used to. It's not gonna be the Vancouver that came second last year. This is going to be a Vancouver that is going to struggle for a while and will probably need some tweaking over time to get even anywhere near where they were. And it's possible because teams like Atlanta Rain have used a lot of really good tier 2 talent to their, to their benefit, should we say. Let's move on to the second support then. This is Kaka. So Kaka is one of the uh, players that will not be coming from second wind. Kaka is from the United States. He is 18, so he's got a lot of future ahead of him. He is the Lucio Mercy Brig player. He is the, well, in current meta, he's going to be playing a lot of Lucio and a lot of Brig. Um, but that's really good because that's a player that can play both of those and to a decent level. But again, another person with a lot of history in, in Tier 2 of Overwatch. He's actually been around a lot of different teams in his history. You know, he was at Kungana, then he was at Bunny Blasters. And then he came to Mirage. Mirage. In more recent times, he's actually been kind of moving around certain different academy teams from the Overwatch League. So he was with Second Wind all the way back in 2018. But then left Second Wind to join up with the Fusion University during their fairly dominant time in North America. So that's actually really, really good. That's actually really, really good. Because Fusion University back then were just... They slapped. They absolutely slapped back uh, fairly early in 2019. So that's actually a decent pickup, but then he goes on to Sky Foxes on a loan, doesn't really do too much there, and then goes to the Fusion, he's back at the Fusion, Fusion University, but he's made inactive because they transferred to Korea. And then 
he goes to Atlanta Academy. And Atlanta Academy do not too well at the start of this year and end up disbanding. So, yeah, and that leads us up to the present day where he's been out of Overwatch for about two months, a month and a half. So, yeah, again, it's a player that was readily available. It, it didn't really, wasn't any problem for Vancouver to pick up Kaka. And, again, is not a player that is big, 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 big. But he has played with some very good talent. We must remember that Bernard of the London Spitfire, he was at Fusion University. They also have Fuse, the support player, who's also at Fusion University as well. So he's coming from good caliber, but it's very difficult to know where they're going to be in the Overwatch League until we see them over a course of a few weeks. The first week is going to be very odd because of the limited setup time and the limited play time. So we have to kind of like take the first week for the Vancouver Titans with a pinch of salt. It could be quite brutal, but this may be a team that develops as they go along. But next up is the main tank. This is Shredlock. This is the other Canadian representative of the Vancouver or the new Vancouver Titans, I should say. He comes straight from second wind. He's only actually at, been at Second Wind. I don't know he, that he's been anywhere else. And that's only relatively recently. He joined Second Wind in the middle of 2019. So, it's been a relatively fast path to the Overwatch League for Shredlock. He's only 18 years old. And, to be quite honest, that's admirable. Because not a lot of people achieve uh, Overwatch League status in such a short amount of time. But it is kind of extenuating circumstances. He does have... A very varied uh, main tank hero pool with Arissa, Wrecking Ball, Winston, and Reinhardt in his uh, in his hero pool. Again, with only being at second wind a matter of six months to a year, then he you know hasn't really had time to really make a record for himself. He only really has the rival code Overwatch Rumble and the NA Season One Week One Contenders title to his name, and that's it. But again. It's difficult. It's very difficult. But he could be a gem that we just haven't considered right now because he is quite early in his Overwatch esports career. So, again, it could be very interesting. But he is paired with a lot of people that have quite a bit of experience in contenders. So, it's going to be very interesting to see how this Vancouver Titans squad reacts to the Overwatch League. But, Obviously, Shredlock on the main tank has to be paired with an off tank. This will be Kasa or KSAA. Kasa, I think it, I believe it is. And this is actually a groundbreaking one. So I've known a Kasa for a, for a while because he's been in EU contenders quite a lot. He was most recently with Raspberry Racers and he was with Young and Beautiful before that. And again, he's a name that a lot of European contenders fans will have heard of. He is a good player and he will be the first ever representative from Saudi Arabia in the Overwatch League. So that's really, really cool. Not gonna lie, love to see more varied uh, representation in the Overwatch League. But he does have some titles to his name. Raspberry Racers won Season 1 Trials Week 3 in Contenders of this year. They also won Open Division Season 2 of this year. So he's got those uh, titles to his name. He's also got a regional Overwatch tournament in Sa the regional Saudi Overwatch tournament to his name. He's won that. Uh, Tournament of Future Champions, he's also won that. He did okay with the Young and Beautiful last year. But again, nothing big. Young and Beautiful weren't a massively brilliant team last year. They've stepped it up this year, though. But he was good while on Raspberry Racers. So, he may be a good a good tank. The only problem with KSA or Kassar is going to be that he may well be in Europe. And so, he may have some ping issues. But if there's anything we know about ping issues, uh, Fielder, they're not always a barrier to success. Let's put it that way. Moving on to the DPS then, and the first DPS we'll be taking look at, uh, look at is Dalton, the United States DPS. He is 18, so this is still a young Vancouver Titans roster, we have to remember this. And again, another player that's been batting around the Overwatch esports scene since 2017. He was with Toronto Esports, remember them? They used to be a team before Toronto Defiant became a thing and then there was this whole thing and they got a strop on because they couldn't use Toronto because of the naming rights. Oh dear. That all went great. Uh, so he left Toronto Esports when that disbanded and he went to Gladiators Legion. Again, we've talked about Gladiators Legion with Rolf, I believe. So decent pedigree there. And then obviously he goes to Second Wind 
He actually probably has one of the best records out of all these Vancouver Titans players. You know, the second places in season one and two last year of Contenders uh, with Gladiators Legion. Then going to the Gauntlet with Gladiators Legion. Uh, winning uh, NA Season 1 Week 1 of Contenders for with Second Wind. He's also won a few of other, a few other cups uh, way back when in 2017. So he's actually got a pretty good repertoire to his name. He's got a good Tracer, he's got a good Widow, he's got a Reaper. And if you've got a good Tracer and you've got a good Reaper, then you're generally fairly good in this meta. And I think he will be decent. Again, I don't think he's top level... Top level... Uh, he's a top level player in the Overwatch League, but none of these players are going to be that, I'm going to be brutally honest. So, you know, there's the, the plain and simple way of saying it. But the last player will be a player from Europe, actually, and this is Suna. So, Suna's 18, and I've always thought that he's actually a pretty decent uh, prospect coming up in European contenders. So he's been with the Eternal Academy, uh, while they've been doing fairly good this year until they disbanded, they actually took British Hurricane really close in week one. And British Hurricane are absolutely stomping Europe right now. So that's actually not nothing to be ashamed of. He was at British Hurricane before that. And he was actually really good for British Hurricane. Uh, they came second in season one of 2019, losing to Angry Titans. And he was really good for, for British Hurricane during that season. So Suna is actually really good. He's French, if you didn't know. I, I did mention that Dalton was from the United States, I think. And he's also, you know, remember the times of Goats, he was the guy playing the Zarya. And he actually seems to have a fairly hit scanny pull, which is interesting because it seems to cross over with Dalton. But I think Suna is more flexible than, than Dalton, from what I know anyway. I know Suna can play the Hanzo and stuff like that. So I think he will be the more flexy sort of DPS. He also had time at Young and Beautiful before British Hurricane. And most recently, he was with Disaster, which was formed uh, out of the ruins of HSL's old lineup and the Eternal Academy lineup that disbanded. So, Disaster have actually been doing pretty well. Uh, Sooner left, though, uh, by mutual consent uh, about a week and a half ago. And I did wonder why, and clearly now we know. So, that's the Titans playing roster. There are three coaches to go through. They are all coming from Second Wind. No surprises there. The first is Flubby. So Flubby has been with Second Wind. He then went on a jaunt to Europe with Team Gigante. Uh, Team Gigante didn't have the best of times towards the end of their reign in Europe. Uh, this was the towards the end of 2019. So this is not long before Team Gigante actually has straight up disbanded. And so, yeah, that's okay, I guess. But he does have some titles with Second Wind, uh, notably Trials in 2018, uh, Season 3. And he also has a third fourth place uh against fusion university in season three of 2018 as well so not too bad but again it it's not massive i'm not gonna lie here but then we have pew he has been at second wind all of his career basically he's actually from pakistan which is again a new representation in the overwatch league i believe which is really really cool flubby's from uh, united states by the way but He's been at second win the whole time. He was an analyst. He then became a coach. And now he's at Vancouver Titans. A massive step up for him. But again, he was with the with second win while they uh, got that win in week one against Team Envy. Well, when Team Envy were playing. And they also came second in the North American seeding tournament earlier this year as well. So second win were actually pretty good at the start of the year, but it kind of fell off. So not bad not bad but again nothing too groundbreaking and then lastly we have wheats he's from the united states once again and again he's been with second wind all of his career since going back to 2018 and he has pretty much the same record as pew uh winning the uh, week one of this year getting the second place in the seeding tournament to team envy but he also has a little bit of time, you know, back during those 2018-2019 days up against Team Envy and Fusion University getting some fairly decent placed finishes in NA. But nothing too groundbreaking, I would say. But that's it. That's the brand new roster for the Vancouver Titans, for better or for worse. Um, obviously, there are some... Overwatch League regulations is kiting here. The regulation that there's meant to be eight players on a team. Uh, there's only six, obviously, but there's only six act active players on the Boston Uprising. I think the regulations have actually been relaxed because of the current climate 
I suppose we can say with all the problems being going on, they're probably going to relax it because it's not going to be as easy to get players in. So that's why Vancouver have obviously been limited to picking up a, an NA roster. I'm sure if times, times have been normal, well, they wouldn't have dropped the roster they had, I would hope. And if they did, they will probably just pick up another Korean roster. But we'll see what happens with this. Again, I expect this roster to change over time. I, ex I expect them to add and take away from this roster over the coming re well, rest of the year, I suppose, uh, to make it better. Because this is not a roster that is going to get playoffs. This is not a roster. This is a roster that is probably going to struggle to get play-ins. So it's uh, make do and get on with it, I suppose, for the Vancouver Titans now. And we will see if they pleasantly surprise us. But from what I've seen so far at time of recording, it's not looking too brilliant. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you'd like to give a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. See you then.